Bien, messieurs les présidents, madame la chancelière, messieurs les ministres, mesdames, messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for making you wait. It was a discussion rich and productive. I'm very happy to have welcomed today in Paris with the Federal Chancellor of Germany, the President of the Russian Federation and the Ukrainian President for their first summit since the one in Berlin in October 2016. And the fact that we are today side by side in Paris is the result of several efforts, a credible effort, and reflecting the uh, fact that there was not an absence of progress in these years. It's also a case of the first meeting between President Putin and President Zelensky since the election of the Ukrainian president. I welcome the political coverage of the Ukrainian president for trying to bring peace to the east of the country. The actions taken at the heart of the last months have been clearly a defense, a decisive action to re-establish confidence necessary on a reciprocal basis. Our meeting also allows us to, at the highest level, meet our joint effort and objective to receive a fair and lasting peace and end a horrible war that has caused so many deaths and victims and is an open wound at the heart of the European continent. I've had the chance to express myself uh, in the last few days on this, the stability of the European continent and the building of a new architecture of confidence and security passes through the solving of the Ukrainian crisis and the Minsk protocol. And that's why today's discussions have been important. This meeting was made possible by the preparatory work, very important uh, during the summer by all the sides, progress that has been important and built confidence. The effective work with the pilots, political work on the 1st of October in the contract group with uh, Mr. Steinmeier and the exchange of 70 prisoners between Russia and Ukraine in September last year has also allowed to restore confidence. Our discussions have allowed today, and I will let each one speak, to advance on all these fronts. The subject of disengagement of prisoners, the clarification of the ceasefire, an agenda that is also about the confidence in the evolution of the politics of the following months. We've also spoken about the work by our foreign ministers and diplomats for the following four months, consisting of working for the conditions to allow the security and political conditions for local elections with the objective of, in the next four months, having a new Normandy summit to achieve this work. Each will now speak, and we deeply believe in this reestablishment of the peace process and the confidence and today's discussions and the uh, behind the scenes discussions have helped us to achieve a result for the first time in three months. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, first of all, I would like to thank you because uh, that's uh, the first summit with and a meeting which we managed to carry out within the la quite a long time. And also would like to thank uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs for the preparation and I also would like to thank the newly new elected President Zelensky who declared a new strategy and it's something what we also able to, we were able to discuss here and we also decided actually to pull back the troops from the contact line first of all on the Luhanskaya 
In Paris, we also discuss also the implementation of the Stein Steinmeier formula, and the Steinmeier formula is quite interesting because uh, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Germany also declared several measures to be implemented in order to provide a special status for some of the areas and to use the OECD as the organization which can really help to carry our local elections. And this principle, what we actually added to the, our Minsk agreement, it was accepted by the Ukraine and it also approved by Russia, and it was very nice that we managed to discuss these issues today. We also agreed on three issues. Oh, unfortunately, uh, the fire has not been ceased. There, were, there are a lot of mines, and we also uh, need to pull back the troops on more areas, on more points along the contact lines. And we also would like to set a new aim for 20. 19 in order to eliminate all the mines. I think it is quite difficult, but I think uh, Luhansk and two more settlements, they should be really free of any troops. We also talked about, about the improvement in observation manager, measures in this ceasefire agreement. We talked here about the uh, observation 24 by 7 and is something what we also managed to agree in this format. The most complicated point was about the uh, political measures out of the Minsk agreement and here we talk about uh, the special status law and it should be prolonged in all the actions from the Minsk are to be implemented because we need to achieve one aim and it's something where we need the support of the OECD and it is actually a condition for both parties and I think that both parties really understand it and uh, we hope that we will meet again in a couple of mo months in order to talk about these issues and we also need some political consultants to support us and we also need to do our best in order to carry out these uh, local or community elections and I think it is a really very complicated task for everyone here. And I also think uh, we have also very good will uh, to resolve difficult issues and we we really want to resolve political issues. We also need this good and very strong will. And I think everything what we discussed during this meeting, that it was the first time when I personally met President Putin and President Zelensky. We also discussed other political issues. And also the both presidents also had an opportunity to carry out a bilateral meeting. It was very good for everyone. Mr. President, Ms. Merkel, ladies and gentlemen, dear journalists and dear Ukrainians, just we had a meeting in the Normandy format. It was dedicated to the to reaching the peace in the east of Ukraine. Officially, it was the meeting of three leaders, but I can quite confidently say that I was representing Ukraine. I wasn't alone in representing the Ukraine together with me. There were all the Ukrainians, and I felt their support. Together with me, there was the truth, the wish for justice and peace in my homeland. Today, it took quite a while. It took us quite a while, but everything was quite specific and everything was quite important. It was important not only to talk about all the matters, all the issues, but also have an agreement about specific steps and terms of how to implement it and to and for all the countries to agree on the steps of implementation. It was said that the complex 
solution of all the matters, the most important thing that we had to agree upon was the safety in the east of Ukraine. And only if the safety was reached, only after that political issues might be solved. Germany, France, Russian Federation, Ukraine, we've discussed and we came to an agreement upon several extremely important matters. First of all, specific steps to stabilize the safety situation in the east of Ukraine, which is full, complete ceasefire in the east of Ukraine, which must start before the end of 2019. For monitoring and control on the regime of ceasefire, all the member countries, all participating countries, have reminded us about the importance of safe access of SMMOC on the whole territory of Ukraine, and they mentioned about the necessity of increasing the mandate of OSCE for the opportunity to provide monitoring 24-7. Also, parties support development of new plan in removing landmines from the territories. Participating countries are working on the releasing the prisoners of war until 21st of December of 2019 with the principle of exchange, we exchange everybody for everybody. Also, we had to publish full lists and provide full access to representatives of International Committee of the Red Cross to all the prisoners of war. We have also discussed and agreed upon the three contact group about additional zones of uh, separating the troops, which actually have humanitarian meaning for all the Ukrainians. Today, I insisted on the necessity of renewing for Ukraine full control over the governmental border. Of course, we will go back to discussing this issue again on the next meeting in Normandy format in four months. Also today, a lot of times I have been emphasizing the importance of removing all the international military forces, military equipment vehicles, in the areas of Donetsk and Luhansk. I emphasize that local elections are possible only according to the law of Ukraine and Copenhagen criteria, based on OSC criteria as well. All the parties have expressed their interest in reaching the agreement in the format of Normandy 4 connected to all the legal issues and specifics of the local self-governing forces of separate areas of Donetsk and Luhansk regions, also about incorporation of Steinmeier formula. Of course, there are a lot of issues which we weren't able to resolve today, unfortunately, and obviously we'll have to do this in the future. I'm confident that we will do this together. Uh, the last meeting of the Normandy 4 happened three years ago. And the fact that we were able to start this dialogue, I think this is quite positive. Also, I want to emphasize several principles that I will never break and will never violate as a president of Ukraine, and which Ukrainian people will never agree with, of course, which is inability of federalization, impossibility of federalization. Ukrainian is unitary country. It is according to the constitution of Ukraine. Another thing is that it is impossible to actually affect the vector of development of Ukraine. Ukraine is independent, democratic country. Vector of development will always be chosen by the people of Ukraine. Third thing, that it is impossible to come to the compromise in resolving the conflict in the East by means of uh, releasing control of the territories. Everybody knows that each Ukrainian considers Donbass and Crimea to be Ukrainian. Today, from the name of all the people of Ukraine, I mentioned that Ukrainians have the right to leave the words and promises, and we really have true hope that all the agreements will be followed and we all understand that specific moves and specific steps will be the proof of us providing the peace. From our part, we are ready to actually follow all the agreements, but this is the two-way street. Thank you, everybody.
distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, overall, I can join uh, the previous speakers. I can concur with the previous speakers. We have uh, passed the final uh, document uh, and the uh, Minsk Accords will from the 12th of February 2015 will have to be complied fully and unequivocally. And there needs to be a direct dialogue between the parties. Uh, we welcomed uh, the disengagement on three pilot uh, areas. This is an important step uh, on the path to further de-escalation in the southeast of Ukraine and uh, making sure there's uh, a uh, full uh, ceasefire. We hope that disengagement will continue and there will be demining and defortification works. Uh, we also need to coordinate uh, the process of uh, ceasefire with political reforms in Ukraine in line with the Minsk Accords. First of all, the Constitution needs to be amended that uh, would allow for a special status of, of the Donbas region. We also need to extend uh, the uh, law on the uh, special status of Donbas and that provision must be made permanent uh, in line with the Minsk Accords that I mentioned earlier. We need to start work to introduce uh, adjustments and amendments related to the Steinmeier formula and other commitments need to be delivered on the amnesty and uh, the ban on the uh, persecution of uh, uh, the those who fought in the southeast. We need to ensure that there is an all-for-all all exchange uh, of uh, prisoners. We also need to increase the number of checkpoints uh, and uh, crossings uh, on the disengagement line. We need to make sure there are no more hour-long queues so that thousands of ordinary people who live in that area can easily pass that area. We've been talking about major projects, about humanitarian aid. Let's not forget about ordinary people who reside there. All of the, our arrangements need to improve their lives, not tomorrow, but uh, today. But eventually, I believe, and that's our assessment, that this has been very fruitful work. I'd like to thank uh, President Macron for his initiative and uh, the German Chancellor for uh, putting so much focus on it, although it's not part of their mandate. Uh, but uh, we all believe that it's important for Russia, Ukraine, and for our neighbors in Europe. We appreciate uh, their attention and their efforts to make sure we reach the ultimate uh, resolution. Russia will make sure that it contributes uh, to this important work. Thank you. Thank you to everyone and for being here today, all three of you. To, in conclusion, on these three points detailed just now by the heads of state, to stabilize the situation in the conflict zones, to set in place the Minsk political process, and it will be made public and also consulted by everyone. We will now reply to four questions. I give the floor to our journalist friends. Good evening, Mr. President. Uh, Madam Chancellor, has this evening given us the possibility of speaking of a real defreeze in Europe, and is there not the risk of seeing this conflict uh, lasting and uh, a frozen conflict in Ukraine, in Europe, therefore? That's my first question. And Mr. Zelensky, tomorrow, when you return to Kiev, what will have really changed for your compatriots? Mr. Putin, do you think we are seeing a defreezing of the situation? And can we go further still to establish a real peace? And a question for Mr. Putin. You've been in Paris today. It was decided by the 
anti-doping world, anti-doping agencies that Russia couldn't participate in the Olympic Games in Tokyo and Peking. A very important decision. Will you appeal this decision? And do you think the declaration of Prime Minister Medvedev of serious problems of doping in Russia? Thank you for your reaction. Madam Merkel, do you also think that we're seeing a defreezing of the situation? And Mr. Macron, is this summit itself a victory for diplomacy of France in Europe and abroad, they ask, in France, isn't there a small revolution which is happening? And can you reassure our foreign friends and French people that our, this Franco-French conflict will be resolved? So, the defreezing seems to be a common denominator for all sides. Mr. Putin and Zelensky had more specific questions on the question of defreezing. This is not a frozen situation, given the number of victims that we see every day, every week. We've seen notably a report by the OSCE just yesterday showing there are still victims in the contact zone and conflict zone. No, I believe that what's been done today is an important stage in several ways that I've spoken about. The first, that's the first time in three years that a summit in this format has taken place. And Ray D. Freezing, we've revived a diplomatic format that is important and the only charged with putting in place the Minsk Accords. Secondly, the first time since April that the that uh, President Zelensky and Putin have met. They've had an hour of bilateral exchanges and a very rich and free exchange between us. And thirdly, at uh, short and middle term, we've set exact aims such as the release of prisoners by the end of the year, in addition to those already released. And I hope in the coming weeks some very specific results on the ceasefire, there are also some very clear engagements on the three uh, engagement zones on the Ukrainian side and also the re-engagement of the OSCE that we all four of us agreed to us, the will to not only have the members here on the ground, but also putting in place what was agreed in 2014, as uh, Madam Chancellor agreed, a 24-hour, seven days a week uh, demanded by Mr. Zelensky some uh, calendar events that we need to achieve, a very long discussion about them, but today's discussion has allowed us to give us four months to articulate the political and security issues to resolve this issue. The elaboration of the Steinmeier formula has been discussed. We've had disagreements on this issue. We haven't found a mirac miracle cure, but we've made advances, very specific advances restarting discussions in this format and bilaterally, perspectives to have results by the end of the four months. So extremely positive signs and a very important event. Finally, for the more Franco-French question, I've reassured President Putin that the uh, Paris uh, issue does not uh, uh, concern the reform of uh, retirement in Russia, and that's an issue uh, on that issue. I don't see a great concern, I assure you. I would like to add just a couple of things, because the package of Minsk matters uh, from 2000. 14, certainly the question about the elections in Ukrainian cities, uh, can we really bring back all these measures to your life? Because all the measures which were chosen and implemented by the President Zelensky set also a ground in order to bring this particular document into movement in order to start working on it because it was a kind of first step because it was a really a very difficult job to in this case a kind of a momentum in a politi in the pol politics
Thank you. Yeah, well, first of all, I think that Mr. President Macron has already answered the question that you asked me, but I actually want to say that for me the most important thing is human lives. I've always said that, not because I want to repeat myself, but because this is the way it is. So for me, the important thing is that we came to an agreement about the prisoner exchange, and now we've just agreed about the conditions what is going to happen and I think that everything is going to be okay and this exchange will happen. Well, first we said that let's do this before the 24th of December, then we made an agreement and we decided not to take a risk and uh, to do this before the end of the year because we want our Ukrainians to get home and to have a happy new year with all the kids, with their families, with their relatives. So I'm sure we'll do everything for this to happen. And the difference here is that the prisoner exchange is always, we've always been talking about it in Minsk as a part of a three-party discussion group and, and everything was followed, but now this matter is on the higher level. So I think that quite quickly it is going to be solved from both parties before the end of the year. Another thing is ceasefire. Today I said that, quite frankly, I don't know how to control the situation because 20 times all the parties tried to make this agreement about ceasefire during this almost six years. So 20 times this ceasefire was violated. That's why today we all discussed this matter and we decided to treat this issue quite seriously. Germany and France will support us and Russian Federation having this huge influence on people, on separatists in temporarily occupied territories and us, Ukraine, we also will influence it and will also control it. So I'm sure, I'm sure that if all the parties really want it, the right, the correct result will happen. We'll see it before the end of this year. A lot of questions, a lot of matters we tried to discuss and these colleagues of mine, they said that for the first meeting this is quite a result. For me, I, I, I must say that I wanted to solve more problems. I don't really want victory, I want solutions of our problems. But we've discussed all these difficult issues, we all discussed it and this is the main thing. Because if we talk, if we communicate, there is no frozen conflict. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of the dialogue. And this is the main thing. And the third thing that in four months we will probably meet again. And according to the results of the tasks that we've completed, the tasks that have been discussed today, in four months we'll discuss other matters. And fifth thing is that I expect I actually, I actually really want to come back to Kiev because I'm missing it. Thank you. Now, first on any thaw in a uh, situation. Yes, indeed, we do. We are seeing a deep freeze of the situation. So, well, we've seen a prisoner swap, disengagement in three areas. That's been a success. We now meeting as part of the Normandy 4 format. We've discussed a, a range of important issues. We've achieved progress on some of them. So all of this is evidence that we're moving in the right way. As for Russia's stance, as I said in my introductory remarks, Russia will do everything possible to make sure that all the issues would be resolved and the crisis would be over. But once again, I'd like to emphasize it. The uh, parties need to have direct dialogue. None of the conflicts in the world has been ever resolved without direct dialogue between the parties. Now, on Bada's decision, whether Russia will appeal the decision, first of all, we need to study this uh, decision. What I can see straight away, again, there have been no 
complains to the National Olympic Committee. And according to the Olympic Charter, Team Russia has the right to compete under the Russian flag. And in this aspect, WADA's decision runs counter to the Olympic Charter, and we have all the legal grounds to file a lawsuit. There are other reasons, but uh, our lawyers need to uh, study the decision, and then they would talk uh, to our partners. But the key thing, and everyone is in agreement here, any punishment since uh, Rome has to be individual is to be targeted based on what any particular individual has done. You can't have collective punishment. You cannot uh, punish people who have nothing to do whatsoever to violations. Everyone is in agreement about it. And what uh, experts uh, know about it. But if they are taking such a decision, we believe that it's not care about uh, clean athletes. It's just political bias that have nothing to do with the Olympic movement and sports. A uh, German press agency. Uh, you also had a bilateral talk with President Putin. I would like to know whether you also uh, discussed also uh, the the situation in the tear garden when one Georgian was killed and how it was influenced the German-Russian relations. Uh, did you have any impression from this talk that we can also are ready to cooperate with Russia, that Russia is ready to cooperate with you? And as for this murder, because it is quite an, an important event after today, Mr. President Putin, you also announced that some of the German diplomats will be sent off the country. What do you want to achieve with this action? Because in this case, I think the deepness of the German-Russian crisis uh, can be even deeper in this case. And President Macron, there was also a similar case with the United Kingdom because in this case, you have to show a significant solidarity with the other 29 countries you sent off Russian diplomats because in this case, uh, because because it was a, probably and also a core responsibility for this murder. Uh, in fact, we had this bilateral talk with the President Putin, and during this uh, meeting, we also made clear what we expect as Germany, and then the G Russian can also provide us the information which is available at the moment because this is something what we can really expect, uh, because we also uh, have uh, a certain perce perception at the moment what we have in our prosecutor's office, and also told about it to the Russian president, and I think that the Russian party can also provide the available information. I think it is good enough. Now you said Georgians were killed. No, this is not quite correct. I know that uh, a man died in Berlin. It's not just a Georgian. He took active part uh, in uh, the fighting on the side of uh, separatists in the Caucasus. He's not a uh, uh, Georgian uh, by our origin. He uh, That's a militant. He's, he's been very ruthless. He once killed 98 people. He was one of the masterminds uh, of the uh, subway bombings uh, in Moscow. I don't know what happened to that person. That's a criminal world, and anything could happen to that person. But I don't think that preliminary investigations could be the reason for uh, the uh, uh, ousting of uh, diplomats who have nothing to do with it. Well, there is uh, some tacit rules which say if you send uh, our diplomats, we'll send out uh, your diplomats. Is that a crisis? Well, there's nothing good about it. 
but I don't really think that the, any crisis could arise. Whether we need to look into it, yes, I agree with the German Chancellor. We'll make sure we will look into it and uh, help our German counterparts. It would be really good so that if we cooperate not just in tragic circumstances, but in other circ under other circumstances, Russia pushed for Germany to extradite uh, that killer, but unfortunately we didn't find understanding from our German colleagues. Talking about the investigation, the day and time will be shared. If solidarity is called for, it will be effective. France will meet its obligations. Take the third question. Question to Mr. Zelensky. Is this Normandy format meeting, I'm talking about the meeting that is going to happen in four months, is it going to happen in any case or there are actually specific, specific conditions that have to be met? And did I understand correctly that though there is a progress in this issues like prisoner exchange, but there is not, there are not quite a, there are no changes in in the matters of elections in Donbas in the autumn of 2020 and about Ukraine controlling their borders in Donbas. Why did it happen? Why is it so? And is there going to happen a transit of gas starting with 1st of January? Also, I have a question to the President of Russian Federation. Why are you against Ukraine controlling their borders? in Donbas during the elections, if this is so serious, if this is such a cornerstone and this is the issue that might now, if that's a very serious question, and that can Donbass, really and you're change about it, why the is it so difficult to change situation in Donbas, why is it so difficult to, to uh, change your stance? Are you going further to further explain, explain how do you explain you that you need to, to the protect the Russian, the Russian speaking, speaking population people? Of Donbass? Having Russian speaking well, we have Russian-speaking president uh, in Ukraine and his well, supporters, you. including in the southeast. I will answer you as a Russian-speaking president of Ukraine. Well, speaking I'm Russian-speaking Russian president. We, we live in Ukraine. We and we people we know can people speak can speak Russian, both the speak Russian Ukrainian. and Ukrainian language. Today I've mentioned to the I've, president of the Russian Federation it is not forbidden. My Russian and counterparts now that it's I actually not bad. emphasize this and I can continue, and I could continue in Russian. In Russian. And in English. And everyone speaks uh, quite a few people speak English. English too. You understand me. So I wanted to say that As for I wanted to talk about future, future conditions. conditions. There are no there are conditions no for the next pre -conditions meeting. Preconditions for the next meeting. Today's meeting, or the meeting sentiment. that happened today, it was really important. It's as follows. This it meeting was, was difficult. One, it was it a took a long one. time, and the atmosphere but was positive. more positive. To be honest, frankly speaking, that's so why in four months in four we months have an opportunity, we'll to, an opportunity this to discuss and see the progress. Results. But we are not we expecting expect any specific results. And according uh, to the way we are going to handle the current situation, we are going KPIs to have this meeting. There is no homework. precondition for further talks. No, there's no homework, we, no strings I mean, attached. Me and the President of Russian Federation, to be honest, frankly speaking, we have, we have divergent different views opinions on the handover in, uh, of the border. border Matters timeline and when it is possible, and I can speak, I can speak openly, openly about it. About it, the president of Russian Russian president will, will answer respond this question to after the question me. He will emphasize it. He and says he says that in Minsk that our ex-president, according to uh, the accord signed by President Petro Poroshenko, the border will be changed the after the will be after the election. I want but I want uh, the handover of the border before the local the election to happen before local elections. I think, I that think I have uh, I've uh, given enough uh, reasons for that. It, so far for we've had we divergent this. views. But again, it's not a coincidence that we'll have another meeting in several months. And uh, this uh, meeting of uh, four leaders will 
are bound to find solution. We must find a solution. Otherwise, so we'd be gridlocked. Anything else you asked? Gas. Now, on the natural gas arrangements, we had a meeting. We didn't discuss uh, transit of gas, but during our bilateral meeting, we did talk about uh, the issue of uh, gas transit. This uh, big practice, we have this two-way meeting when we had seven people, actually, on both sides of us. We discussed it anyway, we started to discuss it anyway. I think that we have unblocked this issue, we have started to communicate about it, and we are going to discuss the possibility, the format, the volume, the details of this agreement of gas transit, because it is extremely important for everybody, for Ukraine, for uh, the safety of uh, Europe in terms of energy. So I think we have quite quite good steps in there. Did I, did I answer all the questions? I don't, I don't remember. Elections, local elections. Yeah, we also discussed it. This matter will talk about it. We'll be discussing it on the level of three-party group. We'll talk about the possible ways of conducting this election. So, in four meetings, in, in in four months, in the next meeting, we'll we'll find certain options. This dif thi this issue is extremely difficult. So, you asked me. I'll answer to you frankly. Two issues that were the most difficult for us are elections and the border. Thank you. Do you remember there is a, a rhyme well known in Russia? We have natural gas uh, that feeds our burners. Uh, what about you? You might have it as well if we agree it. It might be 25% cheaper than the one that the price that's paid by the end consumer. I'm referring to industrial uh, consumers because definitely there are subsidies uh, for uh, end consumers uh, who are households and we cannot uh, um, give discounts uh, for a price uh, for, ha for households. Well, that's our economic uh, rationale. Now on the border, we do have divergent views. Our uh, position is very simple. We want the Minsk Accords to be complied with. Just read what the Minsk Accords say. Now, according to those uh, arrangements, Ukraine will begin establishing control over the territory on that part of the border on the next day following the election. That's what it says. The final, the process is finalized after all the political procedures are finalized. Why, why do we need to undermine and rewrite the Minsk Accords? Every provision follows the other. If we change one provision, one item, then we'll disrupt the situation, disrupt the process, we'll create chaos. So this is our rationale. I think it's quite justified. Now, on the Russian-speaking population, we definitely want the Russian-speaking population, not just in the Donbass region, but uh, uh, elsewhere in Ukraine, to enjoy equal democratic rights. 38% of uh, Ukrainians think they are Russian-speaking, and all Russian schools will switch to the Ukrainian language from starting from next year. Now, from what I know, if you take Hungarian schools, Polish schools, we'll only switch to the Ukrainian language in, starting from 2023, as if there are more Hungarians in Ukraine than Russians. Well, that does raise a question mark, and we don't have an answer to that. 
There are other issues uh, which have not been resolved, and that's why we will meet next time in four months. Next question. Ilona Rudnova, Ria Novosti News Agency. A question to uh, Mr. Zelensky. You talked about peace and stability. And uh, during the campaign, you also said you need to bring peace to the Donbass region and to Ukraine. Now, following this meeting, do you think that the steps on the path to peace have been made? And one clarification on the peace uh, full settlement. If there's any plan for peace, are you ready to uh, be engage in direct contact uh, with the self-proclaimed republics? And I also have a question to President Putin. You said that the Minsk Accords uh, are the bedrock of any future settlement. But right now, the German Chancellor said that uh, the Minsk Accords are flexible. So, still, is the, uh, are the Minsk Accords uh, unchanged? Well, any arrangement does allow for certain flexibility because some things that are written on paper could be interpreted differently by other parties. And we discuss, we did discuss some aspects of the Minsk Accords. There are things that are plain and clear in black and white. And there are some issues which were born out of compromise in Minsk in 2015. This is why there are different interpretations. And I agree on that score with the German Chancellor. That's why we are meeting. We want to reach the common denominator. We want to reach the same standard, it was to be on the same page. But I agree that there's no alternative to the Minsk Accords. We need to make sure that they are fully implemented. Thank you for the question. Now, if you don't mind, I'll start, start off with the following. Uh, the Russian president mentioned it uh, multiple times. I'm uh, prepared for direct dialogue, and I'm always in dialogue with them. I'm from the southeast, and more than three million came over to us, and they are these uh, the people from the occupied Donbass. We didn't have quite time. We only had a cursory discussion about that. Uh, now, to be honest, we have the Minsk contact group, and we have the representatives of well, who we call separatists. And they reside in the occupied Donbass. And I have so many friends who are uh, residents of the occupied Donbass. They ran away from the bullets, from bombs, who lost their homes, their real estate, their relatives. They live on the territory that is controlled, uh, independent Ukraine. They are intellectuals, and I'm in dialogue with them. Am I ready to be in contact with them? I do that every day. The company that I worked before I became president, the Studio Quartal 95, there are many people, a lot of people, who are residents of the occupied Donbass. The village of Lugansk and others, that's where I went to, to talk to the people. Like they might have uh, their home on the occupied territory and they might work at a school in the Ukraine-controlled territory. There are many cases like that. You can come over and I'm going to show you. But not like uh, Mr. Salavyov, the TV host, who uh, does uh, not quite real reports. Uh, I invite you to come over. You can see it for yourself. Uh, 
I don't think uh, your shoes, so whether they're from Brioni or not, so it will not get stained in mud. So you need to feel it. You need to see that. So what I wanted is that in Minsk, there are representatives of the occupied territories of Donbass. I want uh, that process to be joined by some of the people who were displaced, uh, who had to leave the Donbass, so the occupied Donbass. Now, first of all, on the steps uh, towards peace, first of all, we finally had a meeting. If we didn't want peace, we wouldn't come here. We just talked about the prisoner swap, and everyone talked about that. President Macron, uh, the German Chancellor, uh, President uh, Putin said that uh, we had an exchange, 35 for 35, and so the ships are back. Not fully, though, but we're still waiting. We all want to have peace, and we're ready to do whatever we can to bring peace. I think they're intelligent people not to interrupt. Let the president finish. Have you finished your response? Well, it's fine. It's just it's an invitation to everyone. I invite all of you. Do you have any issues when crossing the border? We'll, le we'll leave it there. You don't decide here. On the contrary, we take four questions. We take four questions. Four questions have been asked. I thank you for your patience, and I thank each of you for the work done. And I thank President, Madam Chancellor, for these hours of discussion and work, and the agreement reached today, and the four months which uh, hopefully will bring us many things. Thank you.